You know, I enjoy the NES. I think it's an incredible video game system for its day with a rather impressive library of video games to choose from. And out of all the video games that I've acquired over the year, my NES lot is probably the most quantitative of the bunch. Roughly 120 games, more than that, you know, some of which you're looking at right now. Now, there are seldom few games that I actually do not enjoy playing. You know, most of them get a decent amount of playtimes, some more than others, but all in all, it's usually a fun time had by all. However, there is one NES game, you know, that has been a disappointment for me personally, and that's the NES conversion of Joust. Now, Joust is one of my all-time favorite video games. It's a game that I hold near and dear to my heart, dating back to my first exposure to the game on the Atari 7800 Pro system back in 1987. And as I've stated in my review for that version of the game, which is excellent by the way, Joust is a game that I can pick up, play for half an hour or so, and have a good time with it despite the end results of my playthrough, whether they be good or bad. It's perhaps one of the few games that I wouldn't mind collecting the various ports of, which explains why I bothered with this NES conversion. The sad thing is that the Game Boy also had a version of Joust as a pack-in with Defender, and that version stayed true to the Joust play mechanics and overall feel, which had me wonder what went on with the minds of HAL Laboratories when they did the conversion work on the NES and decided to make some of the alterations and additions that they did. The first sign of trouble that I thought something was off with this version of Joust was when I popped the game into my NES or equivalent clone console, and upon starting the game, this generic stock music started playing. I say generic stock music because this title theme was also recycled in other games such as Millipede and Defender 2. The funny thing is that Joust, the actual arcade game Joust, didn't have any title music, or any music for that matter, unless you were to count the sounds of bloody combat to be the game's music, in which I don't. Upon starting the game, you'll start off in the familiar Joust Battlefield, which is not the clean, simple playfield of the arcade original and other consoles. Rather, they try to redesign everything so that there's more detail, more definition, and perhaps attempt to give off the impression that this is not a 1982 arcade game from an age long gone, but rather a new Nintendo game released and developed in 1988. Personally, I much prefer the original look of the playfield as it appeared in the arcade original, and not this excessively detailed and busy looking battlefield. The interesting thing to note is that the Japanese Famicom version of Joust more closely resembles the arcade visuals just fine, which meant when they brought it over to North American soil at least, they redesigned everything so that it looked nicer or something. In a way it's similar to a treatment received by another game called Star Force when it was brought over to the Famicom and eventually the NES. Now, Joust is a fairly simple-minded game, and in theory at least, the game operates similarly enough to the arcade original. You control a blue ostrich thing, and your goal is to clear the screen of other ostrich things by stabbing them with your lance, or the preferred method of squashing them with your bird's ass. Yes, I know, please shut up, I'm not going there! Slay an enemy and it'll drop an egg, which you'll have to collect before it hatches a rider for a stray ostrich to come by and pick up. Over time, you'll be weary of crumbling platforms, magma hands, and the supposedly unbeatable pterodactyl. You have your egg waves every fifth wave, but you have no survival waves like in the arcade, nor do you have the taunting messages of the original, buzzard bait, that sort of thing. That's not in here. Also, the crumbling platforms don't actually crumble or disintegrate so much as they just fold up or something, like a transition. Not quite the same effect. Egg waves are lacking in eggs, not enough eggs. In the arcade version and even on the 7800 version you had like dozens of eggs, whereas in the NES version you only have a couple eggs per platform and, you know, whatever. Also, unlike the arcade version, when you often ostrich this rider, the bird usually just flies away and the egg drops to the ground. Whereas if you off a rider in the NES version, the bird also explodes and pops into non-existence. The same thing will happen to your bird when you get killed. The bird will just explode. That just seems wrong. The control is responsive enough. If anything, the NES version of Joust does manage to nail the important gameplay mechanics right. However, the physics in Joust, uh, it feels a bit floaty, it feels a bit wonky, it feels a bit off. 
It doesn't quite feel like Joust, if that makes any sense. It is workable for the most part after some minor adjustments to your playstyle if you're well acquainted with Joust, but for me it just looks like Joust, sounds like Joust, kinda plays like Joust, but it doesn't really feel like Joust, if that makes any sense. Sound-wise, it, it, you know, it's pretty good sound-wise, and it's close enough to matching the sounds of the arcade original, so in that regard there's no problem there, inside of the generic stock music. You know, it's a fairly convincing imitation for the most part of Joust, has the demo screen that tells you how to play the game if you wait on the title screen long enough. It manages to get the basic elements right, but a lot of the little details that made Joust such a pleasure to play was either altered to a lesser form or just dropped altogether. You know, in the arcade game, if you were near a teleporter, you wouldn't have any enemy riders emerge from that teleporter, whereas in the NES version, that information is not taken into account, and enemies will appear in any teleporter, even the ones that you're right on top of. And like I said, there's more egg waves, you know, when you're in the egg waves, there's more eggs in the arcade version and 7800 version than there are in the NES. In the NES, there's like one or two eggs and stuff. And also, the NES versions lacks any survival waves, pterodactyl waves, the, the you know, these waves that give you extra points. You know, if you survive and stuff like that. The quips like Buzzard Bait and Thy Game Is Over is missing from this version. You just get a generic Game Over message when you lose. The physics, like I said, are kind of wonky and floating in comparison to other versions of Joust. It's the little details that made Joust such a joy and pleasure to play, and the lack of such attentive details to the gameplay and the feel of the game that makes this NES version a shallow and disappointing experience. You know, the end result being a port with most of the parts, at least but none of the soul. Rated on its own merits, Joust is a fairly... it's a fair offering, that, and you could have some fun with this version, although all things considered, it pales somewhat in comparison to other conversions of Joust on other video game consoles, such as the Atari 7800, which, as stated before, is I think it's an excellent version of the game, and one worth checking out. And even on the Nintendo Entertainment System, there exists another game that emulates the playstyle of Joust somewhat, but is generally a better game overall. You might have heard of it. It's called Balloon Fight.